Hello everyone, I am Josh and welcome to this Sims 3 house building video. So today I am building the third and final house in my Beach House Row series. So you can see here, um, the other two are next door to this one. And this one is called Blueberry Breeze and it is the smallest house of the three. It has three bedrooms and three bathrooms. So it's definitely a bit smaller, but it also has a garage like the first house does and it is Three stories, there is an attic, it's not actually usable space, but, well it is, I guess you couldn't put stuff up there, but I didn't put any rooms up there. And yeah, so it's a pretty nice house. Uh, as the name suggests, it, it is blue. Uh, it's kind of like a grayish blue, and you know, it's kind of a nice soft color. It, it goes nicely with the other two houses, and yeah. So you can see here, I am putting the front of the house together. It has a more Victorian look to it than the other two do, so you can see it has a turret, like a main big turret which will be three stories tall. And then there's a smaller one off to the side as well. So you can see that. There's also gonna be a third one in the back. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, what I like a lot, uh, but I'm, wow, that went well. Let me try that sentence again. What I like about this house is that it, it kind of mixes some styles together. Like the house itself is very Victorian looking and you know, it looks kind of like an older house and yeah, I like the look of that. But then on the inside, I used some more modern furniture and a very, you know, I guess I guess a subtle or um, simplistic color scheme, and it, it's kind of a contrast, but it looks really nice, and I, I like the way, especially the living room, which you'll see has some modern, modern furniture in it, but it all ties together really nicely, and it, it just is a nice contrast. So you can see here, we're putting on the third floor, so that's the attic space, and I'm putting in some back porch, obviously. I have to get rid of most of that because of the driveway. So yeah, you can see there's right now no garage. The garage comes in through the back of the house, so here's where it's gonna go, and it goes right there. So it's similar to the first house uh, where it's not very realistic to have a basement level garage when your house is right next to the ocean like this, but you know, whatever. And it, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if a car would really be able to get down this driveway and around the turn there into the garage, but it, it looks kind of nice, so I, yeah. And also because of it, um, because of this driveway, there's no uh, backyard at all, but you know, who needs a backyard anyway? So yeah, it's just mainly just a, a driveway. That's that's your yard, basically. I got a nice driveway there, but it looks pretty nice. I put a bunch of nice landscaping around it and stuff of that nature. And I really love the front yard, which you'll see. I don't know when I get around to that, but it does look really nice, and you'll see that eventually. Now, with this video, I did mess up a little bit with a part of the recording. Uh, I've done this before. When I was typing in the cheat, I accidentally hit the uh, my hotkey that will stop the recording instead of hitting the delete key, because they're like right next to each other, which is not a great idea, but you know, it's the right bracket key I used to stop recording, and I accidentally hit that when I was typing in a cheat. So there's a part of the video, like not part, there's a, sh a short bit of it that's missing uh, because I wasn't, I stopped the recording by accident and didn't notice, but it really doesn't matter. You'll see it eventually. It's after we do the whole roof and everything. Uh, so the cut, like it will, it will cut from the house having no paint on it to the house having uh, the well, siding, I guess, and some front landscaping, but you're not really missing much. It's not a huge deal. Uh, I seem to do this thing once a year. I did it last year too, one of my builds. I made the same mistake, so you know it, it happens, but it's not a big deal, and it, it doesn't really you don't really miss out on anything, so it's fine. Uh, right here with the house, originally I was gonna have this chimney come out the front, uh, but I decided not to do that. So I also get rid of the balcony that's uh, above the front door as well. So it, it does the front does change a bit because right now it's not great looking, uh, but it still it stays pretty similar to how it is now. It's it's very much not like that's an awful sentence. It's not very much like the uh, last house I did, which is Mango Heights. That one, I spent a lot of time building it because I was constantly changing things here and there and everywhere. Uh, this house was not quite that way, but it's, you know, it's still, I did I made some tweaks, uh, but for the most part, it stays pretty similar. Uh, the front of the house is really what gets the main change. I push the whole front turret back, I, I think, so, you know, it's not a huge deal, though. Anyway, uh, right here, I'm getting a roof color in. I think that is the final roof color. It's just a nice kind of slate color. Uh, here, I'm redoing the front of the house because it didn't look great. So you can see where the front door is gonna go. Uh, here's where I pushed the turret back a bit because it was uh, sticking out a little bit too much, I felt. So, you know, 
need to blend in a bit better with the rest of the house so I'm just gonna push that in as you can see and that you know requires a bit of touching up for the rest of the front there but it overall looks really good in the end and it fits in nicely with the whole row of houses all together uh, I may include a screenshot at the end of all the houses together it, it does look quite nice and I'm, I'm very happy with it uh, you know because if you haven't watched the other two I would recommend doing that uh, they're all on my channel obviously <laughs> so the, the first house was Pomegranate Paradise, the second one was Mango Heights, and this one, keeping with the theme of fruit names, um, this one's Blueberry Breeze, so yeah, it's, it all kind of goes together nicely, and they're all very kind of similar uh, shaped houses, they're all quite tall, narrow, and they go back pretty far, you know, and so they all kind of fit together nicely. Uh, here you can see I'm redoing the front here. Uh, I do add a screened in porch around the front of the front, the front of the front turret, I guess. Or I guess it's just around the front turret. There's, there's... Anyway, uh, I do put a screened-in porch uh, around the turret because it just looked nicer. And I've never actually used these screened-in porch pieces, which came with the Now and Then Century Manor set. I never used them before, but I used them here. And it does make the lighting look a little wonky inside, but it's not a big deal. And, and it looks kind of nice. So here I'm redoing the whole front uh, over by this turret because it wasn't lining up right. So. Yeah, just redo this, uh, you know, as you do, and it it's not a huge deal, you know, just uh, moving it around a bit. I was trying to get it to match the turret up there, but then I'm like, well, this is way too big. So, it's a little problematic, but anyway, I think I just ended up doing that, perhaps. No, maybe not. I don't know what I did. I think, yeah, there we go. I just pushed that in a bit, and I believe this is the way it looks in the end right here, so. Looks pretty nice. Uh, it's just a small little turret in the entrance area. That's what that thing is. I'm putting the porch around and uh, right now I'm going to put in some stairs. That's very convenient to have and also just fixing up some more of the front, you know, gotta, gotta make the front look perfect and pushing back the second floor, getting rid of that chimney finally because that was kind of weird. And yeah, front chimneys can look good in some cases. I've used them a lot in the past, in the recent past, um, but I decided not in this house. It wasn't very good looking, so... I decided against it. Uh, also, um, excuse me a moment while I take a sip of water. Okay, that's much better. So right here I am, uh, well I painted everything white, for, for uh, that's the first thing, and here I'm adjusting the turret here. Um, so yeah, the reason I made the bottom of that front turret a screened in porch is because I felt like it was just a lot of repetition with all the railings and everything. So I thought I'd mix them a bit, it looks a bit better with the screened in porch. and. You know, it's a bit more interesting, I think. I also trimmed up the uh, porch here because it was a little large, so I just kind of made it a little bit uh, closer to the wall of the house, which looks nicer, as you can see, and also made the roof a bit smaller there, so that does neaten it up a bit. And here I'm putting in some columns. These are the columns I ended up using. Um, I like using other columns. Like, I like this fence a lot, but I think that some nicer columns make it look a little bit more interesting, so I used different ones upstairs than I did downstairs, so... Yeah, it's a fun fact. Oh, that roof is still not right. There we go. I'm just going to fix this roof over here because it was completely off. And yeah, so I'm just adjusting it here. And I like having this little kind of freeze over top of the turret. I think that it looks nicer and it, it just kind of adds a little bit of height to the turret so it stands out a bit more. And here I'm going to just adjust the roof, uh, just make sure all the dormers fit in correctly. And I'm also going to uh, get rid of all the little extra pieces here and there and everywhere, which you can see are kind of a mess. And there you go, just adjusting all of that and putting in the turret top, which looks nice. And the only issue I have with these turret roofs is that when you put one of them over another turret roof, is it doesn't cut it the other one out below. Well, actually, these turret roofs don't cut out any roofs below them. And it's a horrible glitch that was never fixed ever in The Sims 3's entire life. So you'll see on all the windows they put on the turrets, like where the roof cuts in. So, because otherwise you'd just see all the roof through the windows, so it looks awful. So what I decided to do is put curtains that block out all the windows, which is kind of a shame because like those windows face the ocean. But otherwise it looks hideous when you look at it from outside, so I had to do something. And it's, it's a really annoying thing, and I can't believe that they never fixed that. But you know what, at least The Sims 3 has turret roofs, because The Sims 4 doesn't have any at all, so... You know, you can you take what you can get. Anyway, here I'm putting a, another chimney on the back of the house. So, uh, you know, gotta, gotta have a couple uh, more fireplaces. So, 
yeah, I think it looks nice. Um, just expanding out that room there, which is actually a good thing because that bedroom was otherwise really small. And here I'm just making all the railings white and putting some more roofs. This house has incredibly horrible roof glitch roof glitches. When I went in to take the screenshots, it was just like roofs glitching in from everywhere. So I mean, you don't notice it at all when you're just playing the game normally. You're looking at it, you know, in live mode or build mode. But when you actually get into the tab mode and you go in first person and look inside the house, it's like there's roofs everywhere that like so horribly glitchy. But it doesn't affect the house in any way. Like obviously, you can see it looks fine from here. So most of the screenshots, I tried to not get them in the screenshots. You know, you don't want all the glitchiness in there, but. You know, I did my best, and it's just a very intricate roof, so it, like stuff kind of clips into each other, and it's just the way it is. Anyway, as I was saying, I love the front yard here, and you can see I have this kind of wall that matches the shape of the turret, and this pathway kind of like curves around it. I don't know why, but it just looks so cool. And then especially once all the plants come in, and all the trees and flowers and things come in, it looks really nice. Uh, right here is where I messed up and stopped recording, so you're going to see a cut any second now. Um, Oh, maybe not. Uh, hold on a sec. Very soon. I, I, there we go. Yeah, I can see a little bit of a nice fade transition. So you can see here the house actually has windows and uh, paint on it. Actually, that's the only thing that changed. I didn't even do any more landscaping. But there you go. You can see the house now is blue. It's like a very soft grayish blue. And you can see I have a few windows in. That's literally all you missed. Or maybe the floor plan. No, it doesn't look like I did the floor plan. So you didn't miss much at all. So don't worry about it. Uh, so you can see here, putting in a bunch of plants and bushes and things, a bit of rocks, a bit of um, like those palm plants, a bit of heather, uh, some more bushes, some more things here and there and everywhere. You know, kind of make it look nice and lush and some more rocks. Rocks are very important in landscaping in The Sims, I think. Uh, I think it adds a bit more detail. Uh, so here you can see I'm trying to find some kinds of curtains or something that would block the roof from glitching through. So I decided to go for these curtains here from Romantic, no, from Master Bedroom stuff. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, and uh, so you can see, uh, putting in some more windows here. I don't think, I don't, I don't leave it that way. I do, there we go. I changed the front there, I was gonna say. It does not end up that way. And yeah, you can see the color's very nice. It's not really like a blueberry color, because obviously blueberries are very dark, but it's a very nice kind of light uh, grayish blue that I think is kind of very sophisticated. And it goes really well with the interior colors I use. I use a lot of grays and whites and blues uh, on the inside, basically every room. It's, I, I love the color scheme of this house. Like, you know, you might think it's boring, but I think it's just really sophisticated and kind of nice. So obviously you'll see that when we get to the interior, but it is quite nice. I also put an accent of lime green on the shutters on the outside, which you'll see that when we get to that at some point. I have no idea when I do that, but it's, it's further in. Anyway, here you can see putting in some floor plan uh, stuff. So we have a couple staircases there, one going up and one going down. And then we have a little hallway and then the living room, dining room is one room. And then the kitchen is obviously a separate room. So it's, it's not entirely open floor plan, but it's more open than the other houses uh, on this street are. Uh, and here upstairs, you can see we're gonna have three bedrooms and two bathrooms up here and the other bathroom is in the basement, so. Yeah, it is a full three bedroom, three bathroom house, but it is smaller than the other two. The first house was four bedrooms and I think four bathrooms. And then the last house I did, Mango Heights, was five bedrooms, five bathrooms. This was only three ba three bedrooms and three bathrooms, so it's smaller, but I like it quite a bit. It's very nice. Uh, I think the, the reason the other houses have more bedrooms is because, I, well, especially Mango Heights, I have bedrooms on the third floor, and this house doesn't have that, so that's pretty much why. It also doesn't, this house doesn't go back as far as the other ones because of the driveway. I couldn't make it, you know, longer, so it is a little bit smaller than the other houses, but I still like it a lot. And you can see here, putting in some more windows, some archways, some doors, just, you know, gotta get uh, those things in because it's quite important. Uh, and also putting in some windows there by the stairs and uh, by the back of the house. And, oop, I have to fix this roof here. Um, yeah, it was all messed up. I don't know why. And then uh, I had to get rid of like all the doors. Everything was in the way of placing uh, the roof, which is really annoying actually. If you get rid of like the stairs, the railings, any doors, any windows, you can't place roofs through anything. And I don't know why. It's just annoying, but I think it's it's fine. I I, I got it to work. Um, so here you can see putting in some more uh, siding just around the areas I missed earlier. Uh, just you know painting it all up, and there you go. Very nice indeed. So yeah, here I'm just cleaning up the underside of the roof because it's always very messy. And now I'm going to put back everything I had to get rid of when I was doing the roof. So there you go. 
Uh, yeah, the master bathroom is actually split into two rooms. There's like a, a small room that has a, the sinks, two sinks and a toilet, and then the other room, which is like the turret, has the shower and tub. So it's kind of split. I mean, there's no door between the two. It's just an archway, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, so down here, you can see pretty simple floor plan, uh, putting in some more windows. Nice, uh, nice natural light in this house, especially in the rooms with the turrets, uh, which is the... One of the bedrooms and the study have uh, lots of light in them, so it's very nice. Uh, there you can see him covering up the windows with curtains at the very top so you don't see the roof glitch. And yeah, here's where I think I decided to go for the screened-in porch. So that's what I'm doing now. And it is a normal wall, like you have to use normal wall segments and then you paint them like normal. And the screen pieces are kind of like windows that you put into the wall, but they fill the entire wall so it looks like it's a screen, just a screen. Except for the angled parts, because the angled parts don't work properly. Uh, you know, it's a little irritating. You can see uh, normal sections of wall, it looks fine. It's just the angled parts that kind of get messed up. But that's what it looks like, and, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. You can see that the lighting is a bit glitchy in there. Uh, what I mean by that is it's kind of off, I think. Uh, yeah, you can see it, it looks off. Like, the, the color, there you go. The color of, I put lights in there to try to brighten it up a bit, but it didn't, it didn't quite work exactly. Uh, you know, The Sims 3 does not have great lighting, so that's why the screened-in area is, you know, kind of more bluish than the rest of it, even though it's the same exact wall color. But I think that it kind of adds a bit more of an interesting aspect to the front of the house, if you have that there. I'd also put a door in from the study, so it's usable, or, I mean, in theory, Sims could go out onto that screened-in porch, you know. It's not just for show, necessarily. Uh, here I'm putting in the wood material for the porch, and I'm also going to put in some more windows and just finish it up in general and yeah i do all the landscaping in this house first and then i go and do the interior so it's, it's kind of the way i tend to do things uh, right here i'm putting some stairs up to a trash patio these stairs are really annoying they didn't want to place so a bit of a struggle to get these to work i ended up going the other way because they didn't want to go next to the house for some reason i don't know why it was really glitchy but i got them to work and it's just some, a small staircase that goes from the garage door all the way up to uh, where I put uh, the trash can so it's just kind of like a small trash patio so yeah it's pretty simple uh, this house doesn't have a fenced in yard like the other ones because it has no yard so I didn't put a fence in it's literally it's literally just a driveway I mean the trash patio is fenced in but that's about it so you'll see uh, putting a little bit of terrain paint here and I'm going to get uh, some trim there for the walls and here I'm putting in the rocks now the rocks uh, look really cool. Now these I'm kind of using as a retaining wall that goes alongside the driveway. I use them on the other side as well. So, you know, the, the uh, driveway is kind of being held in by a, a variety of things. Like we have the rocks, we have the actual foundation wall, we have uh, some more rocks, and we have like some plants and bushes and stuff. And it all ends up looking quite nice. So you can see here, it's, it's kind of a narrow driveway, but it, it works. I mean, it's just for show really because I don't think in real life it would be very easy to get down there and around that sharp little turn. I'm sure it's possible, but it wouldn't be. It would It would be kind of annoying, I'd imagine. But here you can see putting in a um, bunch of plants and stuff, a uh, bunch of bushes, a bunch of rocks. Here are some more rocks coming down the side by the house. So you can see uh, that's just kind of acting as a retaining wall along the house. Also put in a bunch of flowers and stuff along the top of it. It, it looks pretty nice. And you can see there, that is pretty much it. And here I'm putting in some terrain paint down the front of the house. You know, always very important. Terrain paint is the most important thing in landscaping, in my opinion. Like, even if it's just very few plants, if you add terrain paint, it looks really nice, even so. So, it's just, terrain paint is so important. It really is. Uh, and here you can see, I'm uh, just going to move the mailbox here. There's the trash can. I'm going to put the little trash patio in. Uh, which I thought was kind of a neat little idea because normally the trash can I just like put some random place so here's like a little trash area that's kind of away from the house which I thought was kind of neat and here I'm putting some plants around there and uh, yeah I think that's pretty much the landscaping I'll do this side of the house actually because I haven't gotten there yet but overall pretty nice landscaping I like it it fits in really well with the other houses of course uh, nice lush trees and stuff I also put a car in the driveway as well so you can see it there uh, just Kind of on a weird angle, but you know, whatever. Maybe it looks like they kind of like pulled into the garage and like backed out again because it's not really at a great angle for getting out of the driveway, but you know, whatever. And thus, obviously, a car in the garage as well. So, 
Now the cars do raise the price of the house quite a bit, I think. I don't know by how much, but probably by like 30, 40,000 for those two cars, maybe even more or less, I don't even know. But it does increase the price of the house quite a bit. So if you delete those cars, the, the house will be a bit more affordable. Not that it is an affordable house anyway, it's pretty expensive, but you know, all my houses tend to be expensive. So you can see here, uh, I'm just doing some final touches like these stairs and railings, and also there's the lime green shutters. Boom. I also put some more later on. And now we're moving to the interior of the house, which I talked about earlier. It's it's really nice. It's very uh, sophisticated, elegant. It's very uh, light and airy, and I really like it. I love the flooring I use in this house too. There's no carpet anywhere in the house. I mean, there's rugs, but there's no carpet flooring, like carpeted flooring. So in the like really nice main parts of the house, you can see I use this kind of nice square kind of wood flooring, and then I use this parquet wood everywhere else. So the kitchen has the parquet, so do all the bedrooms. Uh, so it's kind of just like a nice distinction between like the nicer parts of the house. I mean, these two types of wood also go really well together because they're the same color as well. But it's just kind of a different pattern, and like you can see the ones in the par the parquet wood looks a little bit more worn. You know, maybe it's like older flooring, they, they redid the flooring in like the nicer parts, like the main living parts of the house had like redone flooring or something, I don't know. I like the contrast, I think it goes all kind of goes really well together. And you can see here I'm putting in a light there. And down here, this is the basement hallway, and I'm also going to put in some nice uh, paneled wallpaper. So it's just some simple uh, paneling, it's kind of a soft blue color I believe. Maybe there's some gray in it. Um, yeah, it looks very nice. So there we go. I'm just finding the right shade. There it is. So yeah, it's kind of a bluish gray color. And uh, I also carry that on upstairs. And I find a really nice wallpaper color for the living room, dining room area that I really like. I uh, actually find it later when I was about to do the study. I'm like, ooh, I like this color. I should put it in the living room. So I ended up doing that. And I really like it. I also put a secret bookcase door from the living room to the study, which I don't think it's usable because it might be blocked by something. But I just did it because it was kind of fun. I mean, there's really no reason to have it because the study has a normal door as well, but I thought it was kind of funny. Just a neat little addition there. Um, here I'm putting in the kitchen, obviously. It's a pretty simple, modest kitchen. It's not like anything uh, super fancy, but you have uh, a small island, not much counter or cabinet space because of the windows and the fireplace, but it's kind of, it's, it's a very cozy, nice, older kind of kitchen. It, you know, it, it kind of carries on the theme of this house. There's the green shutters I was talking about earlier. It kind of carries around the theme of this house being an older house. And then, you know, like whoever moved in here, like brought newer, more modern furniture in, but like the house itself is still kind of old. And I really like that contrast uh, between the new and old. Uh, here you can see the dining room, which already has more modern furniture in it. You can see with that table and those chairs, um, especially like the white chairs that are they're white now, but they will change. Uh, but yeah, and also when I come in with these couches, uh, I, yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge to squeeze in two like things in this living room, like the living room and the dining room had to be in one room. So I had to use that interesting like two and a half block couch, which is from Pets. And it actually is very modern, but it actually works really well in the space, especially once I get all the colors in, because right now uh, it's just the default object colors, which kind of look bad, but I'll come in later and fix it all up. Uh, so here in the entrance, we have uh, some nice uh, seating. There's like a little uh, chair over here and a nice little table in the um, in the turret. So it's very, very classy, as you can see. And I also um, put a little phone and some other uh, decorative objects as well. Some nice kind of light carpeting as well, uh, you know, in addition to everything else, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and also putting in some curtains as well. So got to get those curtains in there. Nice white curtains. They don't quite uh, go all the way down. They kind of only go halfway to the wind, like up the window, but they're just for show. So it doesn't really matter. And up here on the top upstairs landing, I'm just putting in a few details. I'll come back up here later and uh, finish it off once I finish the first floor and the basement. Uh, right now, I'm just looking at all the houses together and making sure they all fit in nicely. And here, I'm gonna work on the kitchen. So the kitchen has some nice tile wallpaper. Uh, well, it's mainly normal wallpaper, but there's a tile at the bottom of it, which you can see. And I went for some very light wood-colored uh, cabinets here, which you, guys, uh, which you can see here. And, you know, it all goes well, uh, it all goes really well together. It has a very light, blue uh, countertop. I also use some stone uh, in the center just to make it kind of stand out a bit. And here I'm putting in some uh, 
color to these chairs. I'm adding some color to these chairs on this table. It's a very nice little breakfast nook. It's uh, on that bay window, which, yeah, it does look out to the road, but it's still a nice little uh, area. And you can see here, uh, we have a fireplace in the kitchen, which is kind of interesting. I feel like that's something an older house would have. Uh, you know, obviously new houses don't tend to have fireplaces in the kitchen. Uh, I also put some shelves here on these windows, which I thought was kind of neat. And I use these really nice kind of board paintings. Like, they look like they were painted on, you know, onto wooden boards, uh, which look really cool. And I think they're kind of, you know, obviously they have like a nice nautical vibe to them. It's very nice. Uh, it, it goes well with this house. Uh, I tried to bring kind of, you know, a more beachy vibe to it with like some of the decorations and stuff uh, in various rooms. So yeah, you, you'll probably notice that throughout the house uh, as a general theme. I think I actually used two of those lifesavers. You can see there's one here in the kitchen. I think I used one upstairs too because I forgot I used it in the kitchen. So, whoops. <laughs> I guess whoever's here likes lifesavers, but now there's two of them. Anyway, not a huge deal. Uh, also, putting in the appliances. I went with black appliances instead of stainless steel because, again, I thought the black appliances looked a little bit more older than stainless steel ones would. I mean, they're still nice ap appliances, but yeah, uh, it looks a little bit like less modern and f like for kitchen appliances, I thought it was better if it went with the older theme than the modern theme. But for the furniture, I wanted to have some, like not as all of it, you know, it's just some some pieces here and there are more modern, which it still works really well together. And you can see obviously that couch down here is not very modern, but uh, other stuff is. So anyhow, uh, I'm just adding a little window there uh, by the garage, so you can see that there. And I'm also putting in uh, some stone, so a bit of stone. Also, uh, I do change out the flooring uh, in the garage. I don't keep it that um, kind of like rock pattern. So anyway, uh, just, just uh, coloring the bookshelves here in the living room. Uh, we have a nice fireplace in the living room. This house has three fireplaces. There's one in the living room, one in the kitchen, and there's also one in the master bedroom. So there's three fireplaces, which are which are all very nice to have. And uh, you can see here, uh, oh, okay, I was gonna do, I thought I was gonna do the living room, but of course not. We're up here in the attic, because why not? And uh, yeah, I, was, I didn't know what to do with that space, so I ended up just not really doing anything with it. You know, I'm kind of leaving it up to you. You can uh, obviously download the house, there's a link in the description below, and then you can uh, do whatever you want with it. So you can uh, just, you know, mess around with that third floor area, but don't re-upload the house uh, if you don't change it, because that has happened, like, well, I've noticed, like, on The Sims 4 gallery, I feel like it's kind of been addressed because, like, that issue of people, like, downloading houses and re-uploading it with their own, like, with their own name, but not, like, giving credit. Uh, like, it automatically gives credit to whoever built the house originally on the gallery, but on the exchange, I don't think it does that. So just don't download people's houses uh, and then re-upload them and claim they're yours because it's just not cool. But anyway, uh, you can see here, not that it's, I don't think it's ever happened to me, but I don't know how I would find out because I don't search the, the exchange my own houses, so I guess I could look. Anyway, what, that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not, well, it does, but it's not relevant to this house build. So moving on, uh, you can see here we have the dining room, which has these nice kind of more modern chairs. Uh, again, mixed with kind of like these more older looking chairs at the head, uh, the heads of the table. And it also has a nice door there that leads out to a balcony. And you can see here, uh, very modern uh, furniture in the living room. So the living room has very modern furniture, like the coffee tables, the couches. Uh, it's all quite, you know, it's, it's quite a bit more modern. But then like I have that uh, side table behind the couch, you can see, which is like much older looking. It's kind of a nice mix. And you can see I have these interesting rugs on the floor, which I thought, um, uh, I was kind of torn about them, but I was uh, torn about that. I was kind of torn over using them or not because I wasn't sure, but I think they actually look really good. They kind of bring, they, they really go well with the red books in that bookshelf because <laughs> look at all the books in that bookshelf that are red. Like almost all of them are red. So it goes kind of nicely with the red rug and it, it fits in pretty well. Uh, and you can see here, uh, just adding some details. I do change the paint in this room. I know I was raving about the paint color earlier, which is, I'm just like, it's just white basically, but uh, it does change from what it is now. I don't keep it the way it is now. Uh, but anyway, putting in some details here and there and everywhere. I think I've said that like five times this video already. So, you know me, I just get on like certain, uh, certain sayings and I just say it over and over and over. Um, anyway, yeah, yay, that's great. So there you go, that's the, uh, that's the old living room. Uh, very nice indeed. Yippee! Okay, can we move on now? Let's move on. Let's move on. Nope, oh, never mind. Gotta get the piggy in there. Also, this house does have the yellow horse in it. Don't worry, it's there. And, oh, changing the color of that plate tray thing. 
And now we're moving onward. Yes, we are. So here's where I find the wall color I really like, which is uh, that one. <laughs> oh wow, what a shocking difference. But it's a very like subtle off-white that has kind of a nice pattern to it. I know it might not look like much, but I quite like it. And now um, I just kind of switched the living room and uh, study wallpapers. So the study now has a similar wallpaper to what the living room had originally. And you can see here we have a nice bookshelf there. There's the back side of the secret bookcase door as well. Uh, there's a nice little desk area here. It's a very nice view of the ocean as well from this room because it faces the front of the house. And you can see here it's putting in a few details uh, like this a nice little plant in the corner next to a bookshelf. I put in a couple of rocking chairs as well. So it's nice. It's a nice reading area as well. If your sims want to come in here and read a book, they can. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice quiet room at the front of the house. So it's pretty classy indeed. So you can see a nice rocking chair there uh, by the window and then I'm going to put another one in as well so now I'll go in the other side of the room and here I'm looking for who knows what some plants I guess so putting some flowers in uh, also putting in a nice little rug as well so just kind of warms the space up a bit if you have some rug a rug on the floor and uh, there's the other rocking chair wonderful that's pretty much all I do at this room it's it's not a super fancy room <laughs> by, by any means it's, it's a pretty simple room but that's what I like about this house it's very elegant it's very simple and it's not like over cluttered or like there's not like a bunch of bright colors everywhere. It's, it's very subtle and it's kind of a nice relaxing house, I guess, um, which I quite like. You know, like the other couple houses had a bit more bold colors in them uh, than this one. So this one's kind of a nice, um, a nice change of pace. So you can see here putting in some uh, artwork in this downstairs bathroom. It's a full bathroom. And it's kind of like a guest bathroom, I guess. There was no room for a bathroom on the first floor, so I put it down here in the basement. But it's still it's at the very bottom of the stairs, so it's like you just go down the stairs and it's like right there. So it's pretty convenient, I would say. Uh, over here is the laundry room, which is pretty spacious. I don't know if it's usable, though, because I put a hamper kind of close to the door. And I don't know if your sims can actually get around it, so my bad if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, just like get rid of one of the counter pieces or like the cabinet. Uh, you'll or not the cabinet, sorry, one of the counters or the hamper. Which you'll you'll see what I mean in a second when I put the hamper in. Uh, you know, I just like to, I don't really think about gameplay when I build stuff. I just kind of just build, and then I'm like, oh, that might not work, but oh well. And yeah, aren't I so thoughtful? There you go. There's the hamper. I'm not sure if something can get through there because it's kind of not really a full block, so. Yikes. Anyway, you can see here, this is the garage, which is uh, very similar to all my other garages. Then it has a nice tile floor, and uh, I just put in some details. And upstairs here on the landing, I'm putting in a nice grandfather clock. You know, that's very elegant. And, uh, you know, some plants, of course, as you do. And some more plants. And uh, just some stuff here on this side table, just to finish it all off. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Um... So now I'm just putting in uh, another detail, some paintings and a couch, of course, because who doesn't want to sit in the hallway, obviously. That's a great place to sit. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to move on to the upstairs bathroom. So this is a very small bathroom, but it is a bathroom. You know, it works. Uh, you got a sink, to, uh, toilet, and a shower in here, so it is a full bathroom. It's kind of in the turret, so it's kind of a good thing those curtains are there, because they do provide nice privacy, and they also... Um, shield your eyes from the roof glitch from outside so you don't have to see the roof clipping through the walls and everything so yeah um, they serve a nice double purpose and you can see here i'm just putting in uh, some towels and some other small details uh, this is actually the first house i've ever built where i put a pattern on the towel i know that's so impressive isn't it there's the second lifesaver uh you know it's a very interesting little thing uh, you know those towels so important obviously uh and Putting in a little uh, table with some towels on it in here just for some detail because there's extra space. And now I'm going to probably move on to the master bedroom. So I love the master bedroom in this house. It's really nice. Uh, it has a very elegant color scheme. It's kind of like a soft... Oops, I just almost pulled a cord from under my desk. Whoops. It's a very soft uh, kind of turquoise color. Uh, like grays and turquoises. Very, very soft though. Uh, nothing bright and, and shocking. You know, obviously it's very nice... Uh, subtle, elegant color scheme in that room, uh, which we have not yet gotten to, but I promise you will get there eventually. Right now I'm just doing the third floor because why not? Okay, now we're finally getting to the master bedroom. Um, the master bedroom has a fireplace with a nice mirror over it. It doesn't have ocean views though, which is kind of sad, but it's okay, I guess. So you can see here we have a nice kind of like turquoisey teal color there on the bed, 
and uh, like there's like little strips of fabric that hang from the four poster bed and a uh, nice parquet wood flooring i love the way it looks in here and the wall color also is like a soft greenish uh, tealish color i guess it's a very very soft color which you can see now and uh, there's the armoire which i don't i haven't used that in a while well, actually i might have used it in my last build i don't know <laughs> what do i know anyway uh, also a nice chair in the in the corner so your sims can recline like kings and queens in here obviously um that's what any sim wants to do and then I kind of mix it up with that modern lamp, which you can see next to that very old looking chair, which I thought was a nice contrast again. Uh, you know, it, it's it's fun to kind of mix it up sometimes. Uh, here you can see this this mirror would not go where I wanted it to go, being really annoying, so I ended up just having to settle with it closer to the bed that I wanted it to be, but oh well. And I'm also putting in a nice painting um, over here, so by that chair, and uh, some other things around the room as well. So I'm putting in a little chest, because why not? And just a nice mirror in the corner, a stand-up mirror, so your sims can admire themselves. And also uh, some plants and a rug, of course. Rug is very important. And I, I think that's actually close to being it. It's, it's a very simple bedroom, like I said, but it's very nice and elegant. So, yeah, a bit of a clothing uh, item there, and that's it. So moving on now to the master bathroom, which, uh, again, it's kind of this two-room situation. So you have this turret here, which has a custom shower I made out of that, like, shower piece and then like a window. Uh, I used to do this quite a lot actually. I haven't done it in a long time though. And then I put the four, uh, the, I mean the clawfoot tub um, across the room there. So I do put uh, blinds on the windows, don't worry. <laughs> there's, there's privacy in this room. And there's also a nice tile wall because I imagine water would go everywhere with that shower not being fully closed in. So yeah, anyway, um, pretty simple, nice little bathroom. Uh, gonna get some towels, of course. Uh, double sinks, naturally. It's, uh, wouldn't expect anything less. And then a couple mirrors, of course, you know, all the usual, all the usual things. And uh, I'll just put in some details and stuff, I suppose. Oh, you can see the blinds are now in the uh, other side of the bathroom there. And uh, putting in some towels, uh, do do do, all the all those goodies, things things like that, you know, nice details. Uh, and yeah, yay, so much fun! What a wonderful, what a wonderful bathroom it is, indeed. Uh, finding something to go over that toilet there. Alrighty, so that's the master suite. Now moving on to the uh, second bedroom. This bedroom is, I was thinking it kind of more of like a teen's room, uh, perhaps. I guess it could still be a guest room, but I put posters on the walls, so, you know, the posters kind of make it seem more like it would be a younger person's room. It could be a, a young adult, too. Um, and it has a nice kind of like slight blue and kind of like turquoisey blackish, grayish, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe that bedspread, but it's very dark. Uh, the bed is quite dark, but it, it goes, it, it's kind of nice. I like it. Uh, and it, it is the, like, that bed right there is, like, the most brightly colored thing in the house. Like, that turquoise on that bed is, like, the most bold thing I've done in this house. But, you know. Uh, you have that very nice fancy mirror there with a kind of, like, giant, um, uh, chest underneath it. So, uh, I thought that was kind of cool. And also I put in, uh, some various posters in here, uh, just to kind of make it look kind of interesting, I guess. I put a nice painting over the bed, though, so... That kind of makes it look a bit more classy, so there you go. Uh, matching in black, of course. And a nice little stereo there on the dresser, a little plant in the corner, and just some various other things around the room, of course, just to kind of make it look nice. Uh, like, yeah, a couple of those posters are movie posters, and then there's like some other ones, just like from pets, I think. Various things like that. I love that rug, by the way, that the pattern in the middle of that rug is really cool. It's not like, a, it's like this really interesting mixture of colors, and I don't really know, it just happened, I guess, I don't know. I didn't even intend to get that colored pattern out of it, but it just kind of happened, and it looks really nice. So, yeah, there you go, I love that rug. <laughs> it's really cool. And, yeah, anyway, that's that bedroom done. So now we're moving on to the third and final bedroom, because remember, this house only has three bedrooms. And we're actually almost done! Wow, it's amazing, there's only a couple minutes left of this video. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish this bedroom up, and then we're going to move on to some sc some screenshots, which I hope you stick around for. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider checking out my channel and subscribing. Uh, also, there's links to my uh, Twitter account and my Instagram account in the description below, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you check those out as well and consider following me there. And it'd be a, a great help if you could also like this video as well. I hate to like uh, go through that whole thing, but... 
Uh, it's kind of necessary nowadays with YouTube's whole algorithm change, which is great because it's destroying my channel. But anyway, uh, let's not go into depressing subjects. So moving uh, onto this bedroom here, you can see that we have a nice uh, painting there of the dresser, and I'm putting in a couple of mirrors. I was going to put in a couple of mirrors, but I decided not to. Oh, there's a mirror. <laughs> Hello, friend. And uh, then I'm just putting in some. Uh, plants of course and this room has really nice views as well you can see all the windows it's a little weird because the bed is in a bizarre position but I really wanted to fit a double bed in here and it really is not a room meant for a double bed as you can probably tell but I wanted to have it so I just kind of squeeze it in there I think only one side of the bed is actually usable anyway so it is kind of like a single bed bedroom well anyway that room is done and now moving on to the attic space when I say I, I'm moving on to the attic space I mean I'm just basically putting in some doodads and thingamabobs. It's basically all I'm going to put up here. I also put in a couple extra dining chairs, like they maybe had extra dining chairs from their dining room but didn't have a place to put them, so they just shoved them in the attic. I don't know. But yeah, that's the house. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, there's a download link in the description below, one for the exchange and one for Mediafire. You can see I'm just going to add in some details. I'm just to finish it up here, just painting in the areas that your Sims can't go to. I'm just making it nice and solid black, and I'm also going to put, I also put in some wood uh, around the roof areas. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much done here, wrapping it up, and I'll see you next time, and I hope you stick around for the screenshots.